Good morning. Today is Wednesday, June the 10th, and happy birthday to my oldest son. Yesterday, I talked about the process of nourishing your soul. Mostly, what I said had to do with the why, uh, when we, why we need to work on our spiritual diet. I made a likeness between what we consume spiritually and what we consume physically. And we need a spiritual diet to nourish our souls. So today I want to get more specific about what each of us might do in our own lives to truly nourish our souls. Now, first of all, please do not look upon this as a burdensome job that you have to do. Don't make this just something that is something you want to check off on your to-do list each day. There's a value of having a to-do list. I understand that. I need one every day. There's also uh, the reality, though, that if this is a burdensome task that you're setting about doing, you won't maintain it. I wouldn't. And so let's get beyond the fact that we're looking upon this as a burden. This is something more than a burden. Instead, look upon this as a great adventure. Here's the reality. God, the creator of the universe, the one who created you, is waiting for you in this special place. He's ready to put his arms around you in a whole new way. He's ready to lift you up to greater understanding. He's ready to ignite in you the power and the strength of his presence. Truly, this is an exciting journey, but not exciting in a, in a trivial way. It's not exciting like riding a roller coaster or rappelling down the face of a cliff. This is exciting like stepping into the very throne room of God, seeing his majesty, absorbing the awe of being with God and being in his presence with a complete peace in your soul. Certainly this is an attractive place to be and that's what we're trying to encourage. So here we go. Following his path, listening to his instruction, learning directly from the creator of the universe. There are I'm going to give you four steps in this process of nourishing our soul. We're going to cover one of those steps today and the other three we'll talk about tomorrow. And now be careful here. Let me say this. Today, step one, we're going to talk about reading your Bible. Now I understand that that is taken as almost too simplistic. We hear that kind of admonishment all the time. But uh, I'm, I'm reminded of a couple of books that I have in my own personal library. One of the most valuable books that I have is a book entitled How to Read a Book. It was written by Mortimer Adler and Charles Van Doren. And it truly taught me how to read in a whole new way. I, I really think this book is a, a necessity, maybe for every high school student, certainly for every college student, because there's more to reading than just letting words come off a page and go through our minds briefly. I have another book. It's called How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth by Gordon Fee and Douglas Stewart. And and that too, it, it takes the simplicity of just reading words on a page and it makes us understand that there is more to reading than just reading. Because what we're seeking is not just to read, but to understand. And this whole process of spiritual nourishment, it begins in the Word. Now here are a few encouragements along that way. Make this a controlled setting that you're putting yourself in. Now I know some people are going to giggle at that. But as much as possible, have as few distractions around as is possible. Have no one else in the room, no one else watching. Now I know this is especially difficult for perhaps parents of small children because it seems like there's always little eyes and little mouths that demand lots of attention. And in order to do this, 
it may be that you need to get up 10 minutes earlier or you may need to reserve time just before you go to bed to do this or you may need to go hide in the bathroom or whatever the case. It depends on the age of your child. But for most of us, we can find some way to find a few minutes each day to dedicate to this. And, and, and in this, putting ourselves in the right setting, I would certainly encourage you to have no TV on at the time. And, and if you want to have music, which I always do, I have music playing in the background when I am reading all the time. That helps me personally. It may or may not help you. But I also would encourage you to, if you're going to do this, if you're going to listen to music, make it not songs with words. Because when our ears hear words, our brain wants to process that, and it breaks our concentration. And so in all of these things, I'm just saying control your environment and make it as conducive as possible to you being able to really concentrate for just a few minutes. And another step here, as you're getting ready to read, understand the setting of what you're about to read. It may be that you're going to set about to read over a period of time a book of the Bible, or even the whole Bible, but I'm talking specifically here about what you're reading at the time. You may want to read a book, or you may want to read a portion of a book, whatever the case is. Read with the understanding of who wrote this. What are the circumstances around this writing? Is this an Old Testament prophet writing to Israel? Or is this an apostle writing to the church? Is this from the Gospels where Jesus is trying to help us to understand the very nature of God or to follow his instruction for us to be more perfect? Most of your Bibles will have some kind of an introduction at the beginning of each book. I, now, if you're going to be reading out of one book of the Bible for a while, just read this at the beginning. You don't have to do this every day. But have an understanding of what was actually trying to be accomplished here. What was the writer trying to convey to the people that he knew was going to be reading this writing? It makes a lot of difference when we understand what each writer was trying to accomplish. What Moses wrote to the Israelites in the wilderness certainly has a different effect on us than what Jesus spoke in the garden. And I want to encourage you to make this an active reading. Passive reading is when we just look at the words on a page and we let those soak there just for a second. We go on. Passive reading is what we do when we read a novel, when we read something that doesn't require uh, a lot of, of concentration, actually. It's something that passes through our brain and sticks to a, to a degree. But if you want active reading, if you want this to be really productive, have a pen and paper available that you might write something down. Write down any questions that come to your mind. Write down interesting things that you want to retain. It's surprising how many things we find as we read through Scripture that are kind of aha moments saying, wow, I didn't know that. Or I've heard that before and I want to look at it later. And so write, have, have the availability of a pen and paper and then, with your Bible in front of you, take a big, deep, cleansing breath. Say a brief prayer, asking for God's wisdom so that you might understand what you're reading and to absorb that. And then, read. I know some of you have an app on your phone that gives you a Bible verse to read each day. And that's nice, but that's not enough. You, if, you want to, if you really want to get into the word, a verse each day, oftentimes taken out of context, is not going to really spiritually nourish you as much as you need. I want to encourage you to read enough so that you get the thought of what that writer was saying. Again, maybe a chapter, maybe a paragraph, maybe a whole book. There are several books in the Bible that can be read in their entirety in just a few minutes. But read 
what you can absorb and, and, and enjoy that reading. Do not, do not feel guilty about not reading more. Read even a little bit right now. If you're not used to doing this on a daily basis, if you dedicate five or ten minutes to reading right now, that's five or ten minutes more than you've been doing. And that's a very significant step in your whole spiritual nourishment process because you're doing something that is actually going to really bring about some results. And, and you're going to be reading things that put you in touch with the very mind of God. How much you read really depends on how much time you can realistically set aside for this reading. So don't feel guilty about not reading more, but absorb what you can. Read at least some, but read enough so that it's significant. And, and I, I guess I really want to warn you against trying to read too much at one time. Understand this is a spiritual meal. It's not an eating competition. And so read what you can absorb and then read. Love that moment. Listen for God's message to you in what you're reading. And know that at that moment, you are doing exactly what God wants you to do. That's the first step. We'll talk about the other three tomorrow. Make this a great day.